I felt like I'd lost my freedom. I couldn't even walk to work. It's very intense. It wakes me up. I can't sleep at night, and walking is a chore. Actually, I'm pretty excited because I've been in a lot of pain, and I just can't wait to have it done and be pain-free. Hi. You want to know all you can about hip replacement, and we'll do our best to give you some of the vital information. To get answers to all of your questions, explore the resources on this site. And be sure to check with your doctor and other members of your healthcare team. They know you best and can help with your questions. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint, and your sock and your ball are worn out. The information provided here is meant as an educational resource only and does not take the place of discussion with your healthcare professional. The hip is your body's largest weight-bearing joint. It gets used in walking, bending, and turning hundreds of times a day. When either hip is damaged or deteriorated, you may experience pain, difficulty walking, and your daily activities can be severely limited. Damage to these joints can be caused by arthritis, infection, injury, and other conditions. If you've already decided to have or are scheduled for hip replacement surgery, this site can provide you with useful information to help you prepare for that procedure. In addition, follow the instructions of your orthopedic surgeon and other healthcare professionals. The replacement may be referred to as a prosthesis. Hip replacement surgeries are among the most common procedures done in the United States. Over 430,000 hip replacements were done in 2008. The procedures to insert these prostheses are highly successful. Hip replacements can last 10 to 20 years. We can tell a patient that with an hour of surgery, you may have 20 years of uh, enjoyable experience with that joint replacement for, for many, many years to come. Most patients who have a hip replacement experience better mobility and range of motion, relief from pain, and a reduction in disability. I know what to expect because I had the other hip done last year, or in January. And I guess I was more apprehensive then, but now I know what to expect and it's, you know what you're, you know what's gonna happen. So it's, I feel very prepared for it. Planning for surgery requires a lot of care and detail and may be started a month or two before scheduled surgery. Let's look at the steps leading up to your hospital visit. You'll probably spend a month or two in planning. Doctor's visits, tests, and other details to be sure you're ready for your surgery. Your hospital stay may be from two to seven days. Your rehabilitation is usually two to six weeks. And after that, you should be able to return to normal activities within three to nine weeks. Remember that these are general guidelines and that your recovery time may vary. Before you undergo any operation, it's important that you and your doctor discuss the possible risks and complications of surgery and what signs and symptoms you should look out for. Refer to surgery risks in the before you enter the hospital section of the website to review the possible risks and ways to help prevent them. I don't think I had a whole lot of concern with it. Uh, everything you do, walking across the street, you're at risk. So, I mean, I, I really didn't have any problem with it. Some risks to bring to your attention are possible anesthesia reactions and the potential for infection. One of the important things to guard against is the possibility of developing a blood clot. Blood clots form in the blood vessels and can cause damage by blocking blood flow. We have newer drugs coming out that help us with the blood clotting problem so that we're able to thin the blood just right so that they won't get a blood clot in the leg and cause a pulmonary embolism. This is a very important part of how we help our patients be comfortable after surgery. When a blood clot develops in the legs, it is known as a deep vein thrombosis, or DVT. In some cases, a part of the blood clot breaks off, travels to the lungs, and blocks flow to this critical organ. This is a very serious condition called pulmonary embolism, or PE. Symptoms of DVT 
include swelling, discomfort, redness, or warmth in the affected area. Symptoms of PE include chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, and coughing up blood. There are ways to help minimize the risk of developing blood clots. Some of the measures are wearing compression stockings and taking medication as prescribed by your physician. You will also learn how to safely begin moving and exercising to promote blood circulation and prevent blood clots. I tried to minimize the risk by being in the best physical shape I could be in. I was trying to eat the right things, cut down on the amount of red meat, uh, cut down on the amount of heavy, of fatty foods. I did everything I could to give myself the best chance I had, and I felt confident in the doctor that I had. Now that you and your physician have decided on surgery, here are the key things to pay attention to. Be sure to keep all appointments with your primary care doctor and your surgeon. Their understanding of your health history is crucial to getting the proper care you need and medications and keeping your risks low. Check with your insurance company to make sure that all pre-authorization forms are completed and that your insurance coverage is authorized for your procedure, medications, and follow-up care. If you have dental work that needs to be done or just a routine checkup, Take care of this before surgery to prevent germs in your mouth from entering the bloodstream and infecting the joint. If you are willing to donate blood, ask your surgeon if you should do so in case a transfusion is needed during your procedure. Pre-surgery tests will be taken in most cases. These might include blood and urine analysis, x-rays, scans, and electrocardiogram. Be sure to fill your prescriptions before entering the hospital if possible. Also, if you're taking aspirin or other blood thinners, such as Coumadin or Plavix, ask your doctor if and when you should discontinue them to reduce the risk of bleeding during your operation. If you're going to a skilled nursing or long-term care facility after your surgery, be sure to complete arrangements with them, including all medications that might be needed. Your surgeon may recommend that you consult with a physical therapist before your surgery. This person will be important in your recovery. Also, you'll want to be sure your home is set up properly for your return. Your furniture should be arranged so it's easy to get around. All the things you'll need to reach should be at or above waist level. Check for cords or rugs that you could trip on. Ask your doctor about items that will help you in the bath and be sure you have enough food and toiletries on hand. Finally, wear comfortable clothes on your way to the hospital and pack more loose-fitting clothing so that you'll be able to dress easily when you're discharged. Be sure to refer to this website as you go along for reminders of what we've discussed and for more helpful information. For additional information, see our next video during your hospital stay.